Hello and welcome to Rights and Recourse, a program that tackles legal issues, bringing you information and analysis. My name is Dumila Matez. Remember, you can also be part of our discussion today by tweeting us at Rights Recourse or calling our studio line on 011-714-5497 or 5498. Alternatively, email your thoughts on the topic to Rights and Recourse at sabc.co.za. After seven years of litigation, a committee in the Northwest will legally hold rights to land they were deprived of during apartheid. This follows a constitutional court ruling on Thursday. The Bakatla Bakhafela community is made up of 32 villages in the Moses Kotane District Municipality in the Northwest Province. For years, the committee has been at loggerheads with their chief, Kosinyala Lapilane, and the Bakatla Bakhafela tribal authority over how the riches of the land should be exploited. The community's land was returned to them following a successful land restitution claim, but the dispute arose when the community wanted the land to be held collectively in the form of a communal property association. But the tribal authority and Kosipilano wanted the land to be held in trust by the tribal authority. In the light of this landmark ruling, Rights and Recourse will be examining the relationship between traditional leadership and communities of rural land in a democracy. To discuss this topic, we are joined in the studio here by Jose Nyalala Pilane of the Wakatlabaka Fela Tribal Authority, Mr. Liufi Lishabane, the attorney representing the CPA, Noludi Luaya from the UCT Center for Law and Society, and on the line from Northwest, who will be joining us intermittently, is Bridgman Sojan, the secretary of the CPA, and we're also joined in the studios here representing Contra Lesa, is Zolanim Kiva. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to Rights and Recourse. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The question, I must start with you, Bridgman, to give us some background uh, uh, around this issue. What is the background around this issue? Uh, the background is that the community established a property community association uh, in relation to Act 22 of 1994 and to govern, hold, and manage their land. The community is situated in the northwest province in Moses Kortani municipality, where various mining activities have been in operation well over 20 years. It is on record that the Bakarakabakafana traditional authority, through the delegation appointed by Khosi, took part or participated in the adoption of the CPA entity, among other seven legal entities. This was conducted by a law firm which was appointed by the department so that we can make an informed choice as to what is an entity that the community wants to hold their land. Of primary importance is that the contrast of to this Pakata community is still trapped within the statistics of poverty, degradation and large unemployment, despite enormous revenue which has been generated, which has generated billions of runs by these mining over the period of over 20 years, including the Pilansberg Game Park, which has also generated huge revenue for decades, while the people remain in squalor and abject poverty for over 20 years. Now, this resulted in the litigation when the community took up this to the court of law. And lastly and finally, the Constitutional Court found that, yes, indeed, the cause of the Makata was non frivolous no, it, it was really. So the community litigated against the chief and his traditional authority. The constitutional court ruling means victory to the people, not only the Bakata community, but all the community of Africa, where, South, where the CPAs exist. And we feel that for the first time, the establishment of the land restitution process, that the people are accorded the direct constitutional right to have an ultimate say and decision making in the future of their land, as well as the revenue generated by the use of their land. For the first time, that the people in traditional communities will experience the fruits of democracy and rule. Thank you, Bridgman. Bridgman, we'll come back to you from time to time. We will be going back to Bridgman from time to time intermittently, as I said. But I want to go down, I'm coming to you, Kosi, uh, uh, but I want to go down to Cape Town first. Uh, just to, for Nolundi, just to put uh, the CPAs, this issue of the CPAs into perspective. What are CPAs and why did government decide to set up the CPAs? Thank you so much for having me on the program. 
The purpose of communal property associations is to allow the beneficiaries of the various land reform projects and programs in um, the government of South Africa to hold their land in a vehicle that allows for equitable participation by all the beneficiaries. So the real value of communal property associations is that they're a vehicle for people to hold land together, to hold land in a way that is democratic, to hold land in a way that ensures that accountability is always the first and foremost um, priority. It also is a very great vehicle for the enforcement of women's land rights. So you find that women are able to participate on an equal basis with men within these communal property associations. They are basically a vehicle that allows the communities to choose the mechanism in which their land will be held when it is restituted to them or returned to them through the other land reform programs. Thank you, Roludi, for now. Uh, of course, you heard what uh, Mr. Uh, Sojani was saying there around what is what has transpired around the land in that part of the world where they, millions of royalties were paid in. The land, the people are still living in deprivation and poverty. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dada Mateza. I think we need to put our uh, discussion under proper perspective because the way it is being presented, it is not correct. The, the legal issue at the court was not between Kosi and community. It was uh, members of the CPA and the tribal authority, but the argument was not that the community did not want the CPA. The argument was whether the CPA was registered permanently or not. So that was the legal issue. And I think you now people start to, to bring all other issues. And I think even in the judgment, the, the judgment says the CPA must be registered permanently. In other words, the tribal authority has never asked for the land to be registered under a trust that is under the tribal authority. Yeah, that issue is still under discussion. It has not been resolved, and I think it will continue until every member of the community has participated and in making choice of what kind of entity would they prefer their land to be housed. Mr. Lisobane, it would seem to me it's rather strange that CPAs were created for a group to organize themselves as a legal entity. And to this day, some of these CPAs are still waiting to be registered. Yeah, thank you and, and, and thanks to the viewers. Uh, I would say that there are um, various reasons why um, a number of CPAs are, are, not, are not registered up, up until now, although applications have been made, you know, um, some decades ago, the same as this CPA that we are dealing with now, which, um, of course, I'm representing, the one of Bahata Bahafela, um Criminal Property Association. Now, uh, one of the major problems, which I don't basically understand the source thereof, it's the, the blockages that the communities are really encountering um, from the chief tenses. I'm, I'm going to be direct, and I'm, I'm happy uh, 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 the chief is here. I've only known him in terms of affidavits, and today we have met. Uh, <laughs> I've brought people together. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to you. Uh, in this regard, I think he has already made a recap, uh, which is a statement that is very, very crucial and, and critical, because the statement that he has just made now, to say that the, the, the people still have to decide about the vehicle that they would want to use uh, in terms of their property, uh, restoration, whether it's the CPA or is the trust, uh, that is still a pending matter. Uh, I, I think that that statement is a statement that I should not have expected from him in the light of his knowledge of, of the court orders that have been piled. Because he's aware right now as the chief, uh, 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 whom I respect, and I've been advising the, uh, the CPA that they should respect the tribal authority. The fact that they've won the constitutional court case does not mean at all respect that they must start to disrespect the tribal the authorities. Tribal authority. Yes, uh, he is our chief, representing them, I think. Uh, we'll um, come back to that team. later, because mm -hmm. I want to know how are they going to work in implementing the ruling. I want to go to Zolani quickly. Thanks. Zolani, it would seem to me that apparently uh, traditional leaders are opposed to the CPAs in general. That's what I'm reading in the, in the, in the research that I've done, that in, in general, tribal authorities and traditional leaders are opposed to CPAs. Is that the case? Well, absolutely. We, we think that uh, the CPA is a wrong instrument. 
uh, to be implemented in a communal area which is under the jurisdiction of traditional leaders. Because it's a duplication. If you listen to our friend who is speaking from Cape Town, uh, she says that uh, this instrument was brought to ensure equitable participation of members of the community in the land administration, which is something that is natural mm. in the setting of a communal area under the jurisdiction of traditional leaders. We believe that it is an instrument that begins to divide our people and it duplicates the role. There is no point of and having... You say government is trying to divide our, because it's an act, no. it's a CPA Act of number 28 of 1996. We think that it is a law that was written without um, applying, you know, careful consideration of a situation as it talks to a community under the jurisdiction of traditional leadership. Maybe it can work elsewhere. It will never see the light uh, of the day in a rural area, particularly under the jurisdiction of traditional leadership, because it begins to create a community within a community. It can't work. Well, Zolani, we'll divisive. explore that as we go along. If you'd like to join us in today's discussion, please call us on 011-714-5497 or 5498. Tweet us at Recourse or email your thoughts to Rights and Recourse at SABC. We'll be back after the break. of Durban and its surroundings is one that is filled with history and cultural diversity. Durban is a natural paradise known for its gorgeous coastline of sun-kissed beaches and subtropical climate. Flea markets are essential to visit if you want to experience Durban's Afro-Oriental atmosphere. The city of Durban is an elegant, mature and ambitious city. The vendors at the Vic offer a range of African and Oriental products, an eclectic mix that is hard to resist. That's Kaleidoscope, Sundays at 5.30pm, CAT. Welcome back. Let us now, I don't know whether we do have the tweeters yet, but anyway, we'll continue with our discussion until we are told that there are tweets that have, that have arrived. But let me, let me go back to the case. Apparently, uh, Mr. Lishabane, the case was the, the, the CPA won the case at the Land Restitution Court. Uh, what happened there? Um, in, in the Land Restitution, the um, ruling I mean, of uh, yeah, Judge Matojan. Correctly. Um, the, the CPA succeeded um, in that judgment that, uh, in fact, a certificate, they have complied with all the requirements of a CPA and that the, the certificate must be issued. And, you know, uh, very worrying is that the judgment was delivered, I think, in 2013, but they have complied with the requirements as far as 2005, 2006, and the certificate is not being issued simply because the tribal authorities, the, the, the chief and the, um, uh, the council, felt like they wanted uh, a trust to be established as opposed to um, a CPA. And 32 villages had agreed on, on a CPA, which, uh, which process has been you know, attained through several consultations in the presence of, 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 of the department to run the process. Mm. Uh, so. Noludi, it would seem to be the Bakatabakafela CPA, it's not the only CPA that is where government is refusing to issue registration certificate. Why is this happening? That's very correct. So the learned colleague in the studio, Mr. Lissajane, is absolutely right. There are very serious blockages in the process of CPAs being able to register. The Bakhatla Bakhafela CPA is one CPA amongst many across the country who are fighting exactly the same struggles. And it would seem to us that the problem lies in the department. And in fact, in the constitutional court judgment, the court very clearly lays out their consideration that the direct 
Director General failed in his right and responsibility to facilitate registration for communal property associations. So it would seem that there really is a very deep malaise within the department, which is hindering the processes of registration and is actually blocking people's ability to exercise their rights under the Constitution. There seems to be no will to address this, and the court in this judgment is clear that the Director General has a duty not only to facilitate the transfer of the land, but to also provide support to CPAs. And it's that support element, in addition to the stalling around transfer, that is preventing many CPAs from becoming permanent when they have the right to be so. Uh, uh, Zolani and, and Jose Pilana, tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, earlier in the year, I read somewhere where the uh, Jose Pilana refused to recognize the CPA. Secondly, it would seem to me that the chiefs are putting pressure on government not to have these CPAs, as you said, that you, you do not want the CPAs. Why? Because this very document that you guys, that, I'm sorry, that you espouse to, sorry to, to have referred to you as, as guys, uh, that you espouse to the Freedom Charter says, the people shall govern. Isn't that the people who want to govern? Indeed, people want to govern. But the, the issue here is that... Uh, the land tenure system of the country under current arrangements is very clumsy because you've got so many streams of tenure system. You've got privately owned land, you've got land owned by multinationals and foreigners, you've got land in the state hand, and then you've got land uh, under the communities, the communal land which is administered by traditional leaders. We believe that we need to sort out this issue because as things are now, we do not know who owns what where. Secondly, is that we think that the communities under the leadership of traditional leaders are being used as a soft target by coming up with instruments that are actually in contrast with the social fabric of no, our I, I, people. I think, I think Mr. Kiva, with due respect, we are dealing here with a court order yes. from a constitutional court, the highest, the Capex court in the land. Absolutely, I agree, but it is not above the sovereignty of the people. The very same court you're talking about. The sovereignty of the people, are, probably you should explain that to me. But the sovereignty of the people is above everything, <laughs> including, <laughs> including that instrument. That is why if we think that ruling is in direct contrast with the social fabric of our people in the sense that it's going to disintegrate our communities, we believe that it is challengeable through the review of the very same constitution. Kosi, I, I, I know you want to say something around that because I refer the question to both of you. Yes. <clears throat> uh, on my side, I think the issue of the court ruling with Makata, it's there, it's standing. We respect the court order and there's no way that we can dispute that. But as uh, on the verge of what Zolan has just indicated, if we are not satisfied, there's another way of maybe addressing that dissatisfaction. And that could be either by amending of the constitution and many other uh, means, but, but not to amend the constitution in two thirds majority. In no, it's, it's fine. It's, uh, it was made by two thirds, so it can still be changed. But coming back to this issue, I mean, it, it is not proper the way facts are presented to the public. I must reiterate that one, there's no any other uh, place or time where I I went to the. To, to the department and disturb the, the department in registering the CPA. Number two, there has never been any, uh, any indication from our side to dispute the existence of the CPA. We were even supportive of the CPA. Now, the CPA only on their own, they split it because there were those who did not want to align with the administration. And that cannot be our problem, but we are on record to support the CPA. Even now, after the ruling, we have made a state, we issued a statement which indicates that one, we accept the, the, the judgment, two, we would want to meet with the CPA and find out how best we can move forward. Because our intention and, and objective is to serve our people. According to papers, according to the Supreme Court of Appeal, it says, a disagreement ensued between members of the community as to which of the two legal entities, a community property association or a trust, would be registered to take transfer of the land. It means there is a difference. 
Yes, I, I, I indicated in the beginning that the community still has to identify exactly what type of entity they must move on. Remember, this CPA, when it was registered initially, it was a provisional CPA. That is why the initial uh, permit was for provisional. Now, they were supposed to come back so that we sit around and identify various other options. But that has never happened. Instead, what we had was when now they wanted to go for permanency. And that was where the argument started. And I still maintain and insist that the argument was whether they were permanent or not permanent not whether they must exist or not. Let me go back to Nolundi in Cape Town. Nolundi, to what extent does the, uh, the rhetoric from, polit from politicians, ministers, and probably to an extent the president, uh, bedevil this, this issue of land between communities and the traditional leaders? So what's really key to remember is that South Africa is indeed a constitutional democracy. And Uba Umkiva speaks about the people being sovereign and, and people's sovereignty. So what's at the heart of a constitutional democracy and this idea of people's sovereignty is people's ability to choose. And that really is what is endorsed in the constitutional court judgment, is that the court affirms the fact that people chose to opt for a communal property association. And it upholds the fact that people indeed have the right to make these decisions around the type of vehicles that will administer their land. In terms of the role played by political rhetoric and statements by the president when it comes to land, our concern is that what these statements and this rhetoric seems to point to is a position that looks at supporting traditional leaders and their wishes above the wishes of the communities that they govern. Now, I want to be very clear that it's not all traditional leaders who operate in a manner that is not necessarily to the benefit of their community, but we must be honest and respectfully honest when we say that there are traditional leaders who act in ways that are contrary to the benefits of their community. And what is key is that the law and the constitution must offer communities protection against the actions of a traditional leader who may not act in their best interests. If the president and the minister and various officials in the department put forward a position that is prioritizing traditional leaders, and this position is reflected in the policy documents, it is reflected in the draft laws that are currently in the processes, that position says to us that the people who matter most are people who occupy positions versus the actual community members who live on the ground. Thank, thank you. I, I just want to just wanna take this call from Andy Lane, the Eastern Cape. Andy Lane, good afternoon and welcome to Rights and Recourse. He's, oh, he's not there. Okay, you wanted to yeah. say something, no, Mr. Mkiva. No, no. I wanted to, to, to correct something here, that people want their land in the form of, registered in the form of the CPA. That is not the case. When these applications are made by communities, in the majority of cases, they are made through the office of a traditional leader. And he signs off the application to claim this particular plot of land. Then when the land is returned, it is now the department that decides as to in which form it must be returned to the people. And in the majority of cases, it is either returned in the form of a CPA or a trust. It is not, it is not because the people have chosen so. We'll and you find we'll, that the signature... We'll explore this when we come back. Uh, if you'd like to join us on today's... Oh, Andile is back. And Andile, can we... Can, well, good afternoon and welcome to Rights and Recourse. Uh, hi, sir. How are you? Fun, thanks. How are you? Yes, I'm fine. I just want to, to say, probably, what about uh, if we, we encourage traditional leaders to support this notion of uh, nationalizing of land? Uh, so that the state can administer it in a proper manner. Because now you have traditional leaders uh, claiming that they are responsible for the land. You have trust. You have CPAs now whom they are also uh, trying to put obstacles for government to prosper. Okay, Adila, thank you very much. We'll uh, talk about, we'll uh, comment on what Andile has just said when we come back from the break. If you'd like to join us, you can call us like Andile, 011 5497 or 5498 or tweet us at Rights Records. Stay with us.
The internet has been found to be a tool used by militant groups when recruiting members. This has forced governments to create tighter internet laws. Technology has also been used to call for social change, as was the case with the abducted Nigerian girls. The people on social media are some of the society's most influential. If they get an issue started, you're likely to have that issue become a national issue. And on Network, we tell you about this serious side of technology, but we have fun too with gadgets, games and cars. That's Network every Sunday at 19.30, only on SABC News. Your World makes it its business every evening to round up the leading local stories and international news to keep you informed all the time. Make a date with Your World every evening for all the news headlines around the world to keep you abreast with knowledge. Catch Your World for headlines across the world every Monday to Friday from 9pm, then Saturday and Sunday from 7pm. Welcome back to Rights and Recourse. To discuss the issue of the Bakatlabach affair, like a constitutional court ruling that is a landmark ruling. We're taking a call from Sikhala from uh, Rustenburg. Sikhala, good afternoon and welcome to Rights and Recourse. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, what is your comment? Well, just one, 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 or, two, one or two comments. One is that the, since the constitutional court judgment, there's been so much confusion as to whether the decision is about the land restituted or the entire land of the community. And the message going across is that it involves the entire community. Now, that's one thing that needs to be cleared properly because it's creating a lot of confusion. Two, the, the question of the CPA or not the CPA, it's immaterial. What is important is that the people must decide now. In terms of the record of the court, you'll find that uh, only 86 people must have participated in that process. Now, can 86 people represent 350,000 people? Uh, do we call that democracy? That's, that's the second part. Thirdly, it is my view that Bohosi, royalty in yes. general, must ensure that it remains accountable to the people it serves. Two, that it acts in the best interest of communities at all given times. Um, and reporting back on what its activities are to ensure that the community is on board at all given times and consulted. Those, those are my views. And I think the Department of Rural Development has to, has, to, has to come on board here and give direction as to what needs to happen. Because these kind of things will, I can assure you, will destroy traditional leadership institutions in the future if these things are not managed properly. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much, Sikhale. Sikhale has, has put a whole thing into perspective. Actually, uh, my producer was saying earlier we need to make sure which land are we talking about and Sahala actually put that answered that question as if he heard him but I just want to go back to something that uh, I don't want to go back to Sikha, to to the issue that uh, Andila was talking about earlier because we we will be running out of time quite quickly the question I want to know uh, Kosi, is that it is said that th this uh, strife between the traditional authority and the CPA or the community has been coming for seven years. What's been happening in these seven years? Uh, I think uh, we, we must take cognizance of the fact that uh, when in our communities most of the times when the communities start to develop, everybody wants to participate. And unfortunately, others come with uh, wrong interpretation. So it has to be a balance on that. And, and unfortunately, without the government uh, help, there becomes all these kind of strides. And unfortunately, even the legislation, some of these legislation like the CPA, some use it to try and score points. 
and it is not helping to our communities. And that is why I'm saying the community has to eventually decide, which is what the, 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 the Constitution requires, and even the Act. So the community has to come back and look at the judgment and decide how they move forward. And that's what we call, that's why we call the CPA to come and sit down mm -hmm. and eventually bring the entire community to give us direction. I, I don't want to be labeled the fact, but I just want to say, before you respond to Mr. Lishawani, the, I, just want to, I don't want to belabor the fact, I just want to say, I've read this uh, whole thing around, there was a, 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 a challenge made by Jacob Pilade against Jose de Malo Pimal. Pilan. There was also the issue of David Peitre. There was the also of Dean Tua and, an, and another Pilan. All these things, and the courts in the Northwest actually ruled against them, saying they have no uh, locustandi to represent the community. Oh, oh yes, no, that's so. I thought we, you were saying. No, no, Mr. no. I, I, I will. No, I will ask him to talk. That, after that's you. true. Uh, in any organized environment, even here at the SABC. There's going to be somebody who must be uh, the person representing the organization. You cannot, as uh, Dumila Mateza, all of a sudden go <laughs> and bring people and say, I'm representing SABC. So basically, that's how the formality has to go, mm. and that governance. And unfortunately, that has to, to go that way. So all these people were claiming to be representing people when they were actually not representing people. Mr. Lishawan. Yeah, thanks. Um, <clears throat> on the issue of uh, representation uh, of the CPA, I want to believe, and it should be noted on record, that uh, the matter that we are dealing with is the matter of 32 villages. And the 32 villages, in terms of the instructions that we received, had then appointed representatives. And those are the ones who are from time to time uh, being having meetings and uh, reporting back to those villages. So uh, it should not, it's incorrect to say few people um, um, came forward. Otherwise, the government would have disapproved that a long time ago. Uh, I think, I I think what the point I was making, is, with due respect, uh, Mr. Lishawan, the point I was making was that the courts in the Northwest, including the Northwest High Court, uh, ruled that these people had no local standing. Oh, yes. It is a court uh, that ruled, the courts that ruled there. On, no on that aspect, I think it was a misinterpretation of Section 5, Subsection 4 of, 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 of uh, uh, the Criminal Property Association Act, uh, which misinterpretation is also being you know, taken further by, by the Supreme Court of Appeal to think that if a provisional, if, if a CPA has been registered as a provisional CPA, its lifespan then becomes 12 months and thereafter it ceases to exist. That was a misinterpretation of the law, uh, which the Constitutional Court has agreed with us that the Supreme Court did not interpret uh, that section properly. And I believe that that is what also happened to other, other CPAs that were registered provisionally. And then uh, perhaps for one reason or the other, they did not specifically apply for an extension. Because mm. this, in, in the period of 12, 12 months of, of uh, the lifespan of a provisional CPA, it must then um, uh, sort out outstanding requirements um, for permanent registration. I think that is in terms of Section 8, Subsection 2. Of, of, of the act. So uh, having not complied uh, in time. Uh, 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 my apologies for interrupting you. I want to come back to that. But let's take this call from Sevilla in Pretoria. Sevilla, good afternoon and welcome to Rights and Recourse. Good afternoon. How are you? Fun thanks. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Uh, my name is Sibili. 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 My, 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 my comment is, thank you. My comment is, uh, there are systems that are used both in a democratic situation and in a traditional setting. Now, there's, there's a point that has been mentioned about the confusion that this whole process will cause. This process can be corrected. The traditional processes and the constitutional processes go hand in hand. Why can't they be brought together and there be progress in this matter? Why should we always bicker and confront each other about things that can be resolved? Thank you. Exactly. Thank you very much, Sibili. Uh, I want to go back to Cape Town quickly, uh, Zolani, before I come back to you. Uh, Noludi, one of the problems that is bedeviling this whole issue uh, could be the, explore, the mineral deposits and the licensing of mineral rights in that part of the world. 
This is absolutely correct. So a lot of these communities in the Northwest sit on the very rich platinum belt, which means that people are living above um, a very, very uh, valuable resource. The difficulty arises in the fact that people might hold rights to the surface, they hold the rights to the land, but they don't necessarily hold the rights to the minerals that are beneath it. And this really means that communities find themselves in the vulnerable position where big mining companies and the elite groupings that they represent benefit from the minerals, while the communities who are being displaced, whose houses are being um, demolished, whose graves are being dug up to make way for mining, and the same communities who suffer from the health um, uh, side effects of mining, are the communities that don't benefit from these mineral resources. And of course, this, in the face of great poverty and unemployment, makes for a very, very heated and contentious situation. Uh, I want to come back to something else, uh, Kosi Pilane. Uh, Zolane, I'll come back to you because I want to ask uh, the, what the role of Contralesa in this whole thing. But let me ask first Kosi Pilane. Kosi Pilane, the, the, the ruling of the Land Claims Court, the Matojana ruling, what's wrong with the Land Claims Court saying the land belongs to the people? and hand over the land to the people. App apparently, the tribal authority appealed that decision to the Supreme Court of Appeal. Yeah, but that's, that's exactly what I tried to explain, Brother Mateza. The argument was not whether the land should belong to the people or not. The argument was whether the CPA was registered permanently or not. That is the issue. Now, you, you're clouding it with many other things, and I hear people are starting to introduce even new things. Here at the, at the land claims judgment, Matojani said the CPA must be registered. Uh, the department must issue a permanent certificate for the CPA. Our argument has always been it was, it was initially registered uh, provisionally, provisionally, and for it, for it to be registered permanently, it must come back to the community so that community can consent. Now, that process, according to us, has never happened. And as you can even hear from uh, the, our uh, Leonard uh, uh, friend yeah. here, <laughs> they have a number of 18 people, 80-something people, who claim to have been representatives of those other communities. But those communities, before they get represented, we must be a part of that. Now, we were not part of it, and it is on record. They can check even you know, on their, their, their registration. The, the administration was not uh, uh, represented, even the, because each village has got its own administration which it was also not re uh, represented. So we wanted this to be clear because tomorrow is going to be, again, people blaming us that you will allow this to happen without our involvement. So that was the issue. Well, if you'd like to join us on today's discussion, I saw you, uh, Mr. M Mr. Lishabani, you wanted to come in there, but yes. I'm coming after the break because we have to go to the break from time to time. And O W one seven one four five four nine seven or 5498 or tweet us at Rights Recourse. Stay with us. Your show on health practice. The people being empowered with knowledge so that they can change their behavior and re reduce their risk of, of being sick. How serious is stress at work? If we don't address workplace stress, that, that negative stress, then it can lead to burnout and, and it can lead to depression. How does absentees affect companies? The one that's really problematic for employers is the one that is unscheduled. How can companies organize their wellness program? Health promotion mustn't just be a one-size-fits-all you know, fits type right. of approach. Right. It must be customized based on understanding of the unique needs of that particular organization. For health tips that will help you to adopt healthy living with Dr. Sillo Mutawung on Health Talk every Saturday.
Welcome back to Rights and Recourses to discuss the Constitutional Court ruling on the land in the Bakatla Bakhafela region uh, area of the Northwest. Uh, before we come to you, uh, Mr. Lisijane, uh, and uh, Zolani and the, and the chiefs here, it looks like we've got a call out on the land from Northwest. Jerry, good afternoon and welcome to Rights and Recourse. Afternoon, Dan. How are you? Fine, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Hello? Yes, what is your comment? What is your question? Yes, uh, the, 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 the question of course, there should be a still gate issued to Bakhata Bakhata CPA. Now, I'm saying since the, the CPA was of 2005, one would agree with me that the term of office of those people has expired. Now, I'm saying that we should go for elections at the, uh, at the meeting called by the Department of Rural Development. And then, uh, as court is an ex officio, he should, be, he should be involved. And we should be at the court of court, the convened at Bakata Bakata Travel Portal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jerry. That's, uh, that's you're giving us a solution. We'll keep it in abeyance and we'll come back to that solution. But, uh, Jose, you wanted to explain what area of land are we talking about before I come to you. Yes. No, I'll come to you. Yes, no. I wanted to clarify this point of, of ownership and why we insist on clearing the issue of how the land should be held. We've got three types of land, unlike many other communities who do not. We have land that we bought as community, which is registered in the community's name, and it's controlled by the community. We've got another type, which was bought by the community, but was held in trust by the minister. And then we have another type of land, which was gazetted and given to the community, just like any other communities mm. now. Now, all these land, are in different entities. So we cannot allow that our land are held in different in types. Different of, so yeah, bring we, the land because we, we have embarked on the program of utilizing our land to, 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 to benefit everybody, hence our master plan, which identifies exactly what to do with the land. Gentlemen, I just want to, I, I'm not ignoring you, but uh, it looks like the calls are coming in thick and fast. We have Molifa from Butuada who might give us a perspective. Molifa, good afternoon and welcome to Rights and Recourse. Good afternoon, sir. Um, uh, I'm, I'm glad to, to be part of you. Yes, Hello? Molifa, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so I, I would like to question on this issue that uh, as, as we are going about talking or about CPA, Bakasa Bakasela, mind you, we are a Morasi both in Muchudi in Botswana and in South Africa. And we have a person who's called a Kosi Kolo. I'm just wondering whether, as all this is happening, is there any consultation with the, the, the prime power or the, yeah, the, the ultimate power in Bukosi Babakata Bakasela, who happens to be a Kosi Kolo? That is question number one. Question number two, is this uh, issue of CPA not being triggered maybe by a lack of uh, proper governance in the traditional administration, hence the need for an, uh, another grouping to come in and administer the assets of Morafe in the figure? Those, these are the two issues that I want us to to address is uh, has the protocol been consulted to the paramount chief of Bakata? Is this uh, grouping not maybe triggered by lack of governance, proper governance in the traditional administration? Thank you, sir. We'll leave that question, the last part of that question, we'll leave it for Kosi Pilane. I just want to go back to you. I think Mulife from Botswana is talking because in Botswana, uh, all traditional leadership falls under the Department of uh, Internal Affairs, I think I should remember. The, 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 there's no house of traditional leaders. Let me come to you, uh, Mr. Lishawane. You wanted to say something, you wanted to clarify yes. a couple of things. Yes. Um, the, the, the first issue that I needed to clarify has been raised repeatedly by the Chief the, about having a meeting uh, of the community to decide the correct vehicle to administer the land. I think that is in contrary with the decision of, of the two courts. The, 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 
um, the land claims court as well as the as the constitutional court. Because it has decided that a certificate be issued and that the CPA must be responsible. O automatically, the CPA must be responsible on the properties that are already uh, registered in the names of the CPA um, as, a, as, a, as a result of um, Section 42D. Uh, uh, that's, now, that's something else I, 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 just, I just want to add a rider. My apologies. Once again, Jerry called from Northwest, and Jerry said uh, there needs the to be an election yes, of the CPA. That. Yes. Now, um, I think Jerry should, should be able to, should understand that I think the term of office of the CPA is five years. Now, if you calculate the period of five years from uh, 2005, 2006, it's, it's, it's way out. But we are dealing with an entity that was not recognized. So. If it is recognized today, you cannot legislate for the past. So automatically, the lifespan of the CPA starts today. It was not the CPA all along. The chief has been saying it's not a CPA until the court says it's a CPA. So you cannot say that on the duration that the, there has been a dispute about whether the CPA should be given a certificate, a final certificate of existence or not. Then they have served the office. There was no office. It starts now. You can't legislate for the past. Well, I wanted to come to you, Zolani. I'm told time is up for can, this can segment, but uh, we'll uh, come back f with Zolani when we come back from the, from the break. Uh, if you'd like to join us and call us, you can still call us on 5497 or 5498 or tweet us at Rise Records. Stay with us. Welcome back to Rise and Recourse as we're discussing this constitutional court ruling, a landmark ruling by the constitutional court. Zolani, uh, many people are saying that uh, Contralesa is actually stirring the port here. Mm. No, 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 not really. You see, we, we are an organization, and you are correct when you say we are an NGO, we are a non-governmental organization. Um, we are an organization that represents the interests of traditional communities and traditional leaders. And uh, we exist uh, purely on the basis of, an, of wanting to ensure development in the areas under the jurisdiction of traditional leaders. We are also advocating the unity of traditional leaders and the communities that they lead. That is what we, we, we represent. And land becomes a key and a strategic asset of our communities. And uh, we are of the view that the land question should be uppermost in the agenda of their country because the liberation movement had a historical task of returning the land from the minority to the majority. We believe that this has not happened. The issues that we are dealing here with today are a piecemeal fashion. We are dealing with symptoms. We need to go to the cause of why we are sitting in the mess that we are sitting in. And I think unless we do that, we would not have done justice in dealing with the land question in the country. Thank you very much. Probably we should go and unpack the Land Act of 1913. Chief uh, Khosi, uh, Mulife from Botswana asked a very pertinent question, that the Makhatla belong to a wider group of people. There is Hosikulu, Hosikulu, Muchudi in Butuan. Has he been consulted? Are you in contact with Hosikulu Muchudi? Uh, I'm not in contact now, but he was part of the process. He even acted in one of the actions in court, and he was uh, kicked out by the court because he wanted to be Amikas Kurai, but he was actually even on the side of, of the CPA, we felt, but that's not the issue now. 
Mr. Shabaro, you wanted to put that into perspective? <laughs> yes, I, I simply, I think he has, he has covered the point that Hoshi uh, Hafela Hafela wanted to join the proceedings, but he never filed, he never filed his, his papers. Mm -hmm. So th that's where it ended. Gentlemen, I see we are quickly running out of time. Let's go to solutions. Uh, Noludi, let me come to you. What would, in your view, what in your view should happen? The best way going forward is to absolutely prioritize people's ability to choose. Solutions going forward need to understand that participation in the restitution and the land reform programs is not subject to the approval of your traditional leader. Their solutions also must take into consideration the fact that the Constitution recognizes traditional leadership subject to customary law, and at the heart of customary law are the people, the people in those communities. It's also really key that solutions going forward absolutely require the Department Department of Rural Development and Land Reform to provide support to either CPAs or trusts in order to make sure that people's choice as to which land administration vehicle is used is not a hollow choice, but a choice that has support and is actually able to function. It is important that traditional leaders are part of the process and are part of the conversation, but what must be made very clear in the solutions is that their voice is not outranking the voice of the communities who they uh, preside over. Gentlemen, I, I, I want to come back to you. The, the order of the Supreme Court of the Supreme the Constitutional Court says, in the result of the in the result, the following order is made. Leave to appeal, the appeal is upheld, the order of the Supreme Court of Appeal is set aside, the order of the land claims court is reinstated. The Minister and of Rural and Land this is about uh, this this is about uh, the costs, who's bearing the costs of the credit. But I, I just want to come to something. What is going to happen now? Uh, Dumile, I said we are going to have to sit down together, the CPA and the community and the administration, and chat the way forward. Let That's me just say, before you respond, Mr. Lishawan, I just want to take this caller on the line now. Good afternoon and welcome to Rights and Recourse. Is the caller still there? Are you still there? Now it seems not to be there. Mr. Lishawan. Yes, thank you so much. I wish to say I was showing the, the chief the attempt of the CPA to meet with him and his legal representatives, which did not bear fruit. Or oh, I'm still waiting for a reply, but the date that we suggested is long gone. Um, although this is not an issue I should be raising here. Uh, but um, I, I would say that uh, the chiefs are part of the communities. Uh, they are not rejected. I've looked into the constitution of the CPA. It acknowledges the chief. And therefore, for, for the chief to come and say that the CPA is not recognized, in fact, uh, we should have another vehicle or the community must decide again. They've decided that the CPA should be an order of the day and that should be respected. The constitutional court has also affirmed the decision of the land claims court that the CPA is the order of the day. That should be respected. I think uh, with what uh, uh, Contralesa is doing uh, now, it's very late. They should have challenged the the you know the establishment of the act the enactment of the act not the establishment of the cpa it's it's a it's a huge contradiction the, this act has been there for such a long time consultative processes have been i mean remember this is the act of parliament there has been consultation i'm sure they've been consulted as contralizer they did not see a snake now that in certain areas uh, <laughs> the, there are certain benefits that might possibly be accruing there is a snake now we need to reverse the process it's, it's incorrect yeah, it's we need case. to work together we need to work together we are the communities and communities are crying there and you, you have heard the, the the previous caller saying that we are so much underdeveloped as a community there is unemployment there is poverty at its best but when you look at the tribal offices uh, of the chief, it's classic. It's like it's in, it's in Santa, no, in, in Europe, <laughs> but a millimeter away from from the tribal offices, you find a house built of mud. I just want to the, the time chief we have, Mr. Lishabane, my apologies. I want Zolani to respond to something you said yeah. about Controlesa, and I want the chief, the, the chief Pilani, to respond also. Yeah, yeah no, the the land question uh, in South Africa is is, is 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 it predates democracy, and therefore CPA Zolani, is, I think let us let us confine ourselves to these rulings by the courts of yeah. law. No, what we want to say is a way forward. Let me talk to that. Mm. That uh, once people are, are, are given uh, the status of that CPA, it does not mean that they cease to be part and parcel of the community. They are still part and parcel of that community. Uh, that's why we're saying that the manner in which sometimes the chairpersons of the CPA is fashion themselves, it's that they become traditional leaders uh, themselves now. 
We want to compete with traditional leaders that are, are credible and, and, and have legitimacy in the eyes of the people. I want to say, therefore, as Condoleezza, the custodians of land in communal areas are traditional leaders. That and is opposed somewhere. That is opposed. That's not according to the Constitution. That's not according to the Constitutional Court. Well, I know. I know that that's what it says. That's why we are saying that uh, uh, the sovereignty of the people at the end of the day uh, is above everything in their space. I want to give the last word to Kosi Pilan. Uh, regarding the, the, the act, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's common cause that uh, legislation can always be amended or repealed. So it cannot be something that we need to debate now. If, if it, there's a process to, to that effect, it let it go. But my point is, we are consistently saying we want to move forward. And I'm glad that I've just seen the invitation from, from uh, Raleigh Shabani, which I think we'll have to deal with it, because that has always been our intention, to come and sit around and make sure that we understand the rules and move forward. Because I think the problem is the rules. Uh, when, when you come to administration or you are now up about to administer a land and all of a sudden you become a leader of the community without even that mandate, it, be, it brings a problem. And I think it is unfortunate because that is something that is going to draw our communities back, backward instead of moving forward. The example that Rel Shavan was using, using that the offices are posh. And next door, it's, it's, it's a rural. It's a slum. I, I, I don't think that's, that's the proper perspective, because that's how we start to move. You start at a point and move from there. You cannot start with the whole thing. Oh, yeah. So I think that must, and they should not mislead our people and showing this kind of perspective. Because what we did in Murule, it, there's never any other area that has happened like Murule. No other area has developed like Murugu Jose, from the rural community. Jose, thank you very much. I want to thank you, gentlemen and lady, uh, Nolundi down in Cape Town, Zolani, you, you gave a bit of perspective, a huge perspective from a controlesa point of view. Mr. Lishabane, thank you very much. Jose, uh, thank you. We'll, we must have this discussion again. We have decided during the month of September we'll be dealing with these issues of traditional leadership and the democracy because we want to see how do the two work together. We've now come to the end end of today's program. Thank you to our guests for making time to be with us today. This has been Rights and Recourse. This program is repeated at 10 tonight and at 5 on Monday morning. From all of us here in the studio, it's goodbye.